biggest gut check moment? Do you mean like most humiliating, humbling moment or humbling moment? Um, there's been a lot of that, uh, man. I feel like every day in some way, shape or form, I get uh, humbled. <laughs> it's, uh, I say that uh, um, being an entrepreneur is just a series uh, of, of, of getting your head out of your own ass. It's like how fast can you get your head back out of your ass is gonna be the, the best, most successful entrepreneur. But you can't, you have to go that direction with passion and, and hard, but you also have to be willing to just extract your head right back out. Um, when you realize it's not going as, like you wanted it to. Um, man, there's, so there's been a lot. Uh, the most, like the one that like really ugh, hurt probably the biggest is when our board uh, showed up on my doorstep. They literally flew into Indianapolis from all over the country uh, to ask me to step down as CEO. Um, we had, uh, the company was, so we took off like a rocket ship about five years ago because we'd signed a deal with Anheuser-Busch. Um, and quite frankly, you know, in hindsight, like at the time it was like, yeah, we were kings of the world. This is it, this, we're gonna make it. Like everything was just exactly almost how it had been written in the business plan. I mean, they, they, they got the advertising, the advertising dollars allowed us to sell the cups less expensively to the general public. Um, you know, we were, because of, because of Anheuser-Busch buying in hard, high quantities of the dispensers, we were able to, at least on paper, uh, sell the dispensers very, very inexpensively, on par with uh, beer faucets, you know, like on par with regular standard draft equipment. It was what, it was almost exactly what we had so naively written in our first business plan. Well, we went with this and it, blew us up. I mean, we, we were going gangbusters. We were literally making millions of dollars going from the garage where we were doing, you know, onesie twosie accounts to making millions of dollars working with Anheuser-Busch. Well, you gotta be real careful. Like I caution anybody that is, uh, you know, venturing out and now one customer is blowing them up to you. Well, if you lose that customer or something isn't going quite right, there's a whole myriad of reasons that the, that it wasn't, we grew, we grew too quick. Sorry, I'm stumbling around a little bit. We grew too quick and um, people didn't get the equipment because it was being framed up as a, you know, as a, a gimmick really, I, I think, because it was being sold on par with regular draft equipment. It was a neat novel new thing that filled through the bottom and, uh, and equipment was going out faster than we could keep track of it. So equipment was landing in, a, in accounts' hands. Oh, and they were buying the cup for very close to what a regular cup costs. And this was being, um, this was because of all the advertising. Anheuser-Busch was buying the advertising in the bottom of the, the cup, which allowed us to then sell the cups for a lower price to the customer. Well, that's great. But the customer, when, when, our, when our relationship uh, ended with Anheuser-Busch, um, the cup went to the normal price. And all of our customers that were using the equipment were like, why are you charging us so much for these cups? Well, we're not charging you anymore. We're just not, you know, the advertising buys aren't allowing us to lower the cost of the cup to you. Um, that wasn't very well received. Anyway, it all fell apart. We, uh, a great analogy would be we grew a giant tree with super shallow roots. This all fell apart. We had built this big thing on super shallow roots on a, on a very thin foundation. And we had to rebuild from that. Um, and, you know, and it was going against everything that had been written in the original business plan that the investors had invested in. And uh, it was, I mean, it was all, it was all hands on deck. It was, uh, it was terrible. I mean, it was. It, this was one of the hardest times of my life. I had to let go of over half of our staff, um, you know. And uh, I, you know, frankly, I was doing a bad job of communicating uh, where we were, what we were doing. I mean, if I were going to make an excuse, I'd say that I was busy trying to keep the ship upright and didn't, you know, wasn't doing a good job of reporting what I was doing to keep the ship upright. Right. Still, my fault. I, I should have been doing a better job of that. I should have been doing a better job of explaining what was going on um, and what we were going through. But we, we had to rebuild. We had to basically start from square one and really rebuild. 
And uh, we've done that. I mean, we've, that's been, I think that's almost five years ago now. And, um, <clears throat> it, well, it was, it was two years, two-ish years ago where I was asked to step down, but it took that long to get everything rolling and headed that direction. Um, I mean, we basically had to do a page one rewrite of the direction we were headed. And uh, we've done it. I mean, it's, we're, <laughs> we're the best we've ever been. And we've got, I mean, our roots are miles down into the ground now. I've never, uh, <laughs> it's awesome. And uh, we, we can grow this tree as uh, tall as we want to now. And I fully intend on uh, growing a pretty big tree. Um, <laughs> we can get away from that analogy now. Uh, but yeah, so uh, they showed up, asked me to step down. Um, I declined. I'm here now. Everything's going great. Uh, I, you know, yeah, that was, that was the, to answer your question, that was the biggest gut check moment. That's a little bit of the story behind it. Obviously it goes, it's a much longer story, but uh, yes, biggest gut check moment per your original question.